and welcome to More Than Organized Monday. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how to pick your to-dos. You know, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what do I want to do today? Um, so think about that. What is what is the thing that will um, help you figure out how to decide what to work on? So I have... Um, I have this way of looking at it that's slightly different than other people's and I find it so helpful and every time I get off track from it, things start going awry and I get confused and I work on busy work instead of the actual important stuff. So I wanted to share this with you today because I'm putting it into practice for myself. So I'm a fan of layering and time blocking your schedule, which means thinking about your schedule in some chunks. I actually think of my day because I try to work no more than seven hours in a day and five is actually my ideal. But what I strive for is one 90 minute block of deep work, which we're going to return to in just uh, a few minutes, 90 minutes to three hours on that one, kind of depending on the day. Then I think of two, um, 40, let's see two 90 minute blocks, one 60 minute block and one three hour block is how I actually think about it. Sometimes it gets scaled back just a little bit depending on what's going on. So let me just repeat that because I messed, I flubbed it up a little bit. Two 90 minute blocks, one 60 minute block and one three hour block. Um, Or it could be two more 90 minute blocks is how I meant to say that. So, Thinking of it, of your day in this manner helps you create a more realistic framework, a basic one that devotes time to your commitments, the ones that are even to yourself, and it allows you to layer in some time for routine items, and it allows you so the and the routine items are the things that keep life flowing, right? They are the laundry, the dishes, the returning phone calls, the emails, the marketing outreach. It's the picking kids up from school, right? The routines. And then the, the last time block is the one the 90 minutes to 3 hours block and I like this one for deep work. So we're back to the deep stuff, the creative stuff, the and potentially the need to get done things um, from your important task list. So let's pretend I have my day and I have a client that's usually somewhere between um, 90 minutes and three hours that I need to devote to that client. They get either a 90 minute block or a three hour block, right? Or two 90 minute blocks. Usually I think of it as two 90 minute blocks. And then I have another 90 minute block I can use for deep work on that day. But if I don't have a client on that day, I have three potential 90 minute blocks that I can devote to deeper work or to crank things out. So sometimes it's important to think through the difference between quick tasks or one-off tasks that may involve a little bit more time, but don't need an entire day scheduled for them. So I don't want you to, I want you to think of those as um, quick tasks, even though some of them may be a little bit longer. Those go into 60 minute tasks, 60 minute time block, because that is my administrative tasks for the day. Those are the replying to things. That is the stuff that has to get done. And it could be broken down into a few 20 minute blocks if you need to, but think of those as the where you fill in the the routine tasks. And one of the routine tasks would be looking at one-off tasks for your day. Determining what you're going to work on during the deep work time blocks, though, that's where people start going off the rails, right? You start looking for projects or things you feel like working on or stuff that comes up or you give your time away because technically you don't have a big checklist group of items that need to get done during that time. And so it's easy to get distracted during that time. 
But what you want to do is ask yourself these three questions that'll help determine the best things to work on during your deeper work time. So I, I ask these kind of at the beginning of the week and then I double check every day just to see if it still fits in with what else might have come up. So the first one is, what is the next item that gets you to your desired outcome? Whatever your biggest desired outcome is, maybe it's just getting through the semester. Maybe it's getting um, planned for your camping trip. Maybe it's starting a new business and you need to set up your course platform. What is the next item that gets you to your desired outcome? And spend the time on that. And then what's the thing that brings in money? It might be what saves you money, which could be prepping some meals. It could be posting some things for sale or taking things for sale. It could be applying for a new job that has a different salary range. It could be adding a new product to your offerings if you are in business for yourself, right? So the second one is what brings in the money. Sometimes it's just paying the bills so you don't have to pay late fees, right? Um, and then the third one is what is the thing that makes other things easier? Is it setting up a new system? Is it uh, setting up a new way of scheduling and, and some parameters for decision making for your whole family? Where is it that is going to make things easier for next time? Maybe it's organizing your laundry room so you don't have 12 different styles of laundry detergent to choose from, but you can get it down to one at a time and have a rotation system put in place. So these are the things I consider. The interesting part is these three things, while they are best used for determining the important tasks to work on during your deep work time, sometimes they apply to your routine things as well. Whenever I do a routine task, I try to make that routine easier next time. And anytime I think about money, I think about making my money tasks more routine and automated so I don't have to think about it as much. I'm not the kind of person that loves to think about money down to the detail. I'm not a balance my checkbook down to the penny. But I am a person who loves money and understanding how it flows in my life. And so I like changing it up in terms of what am I going to pay attention to? Is there one piece of my money puzzle that I can bring in that will help things uh, in the future? Or can I set up even making calls to bring in new clients up for um, an easier process? Automating my emails for customer outreach, those kinds of things can um play into this what brings in the money thing that is actually during some of the routine time. But the things that get me to my desired outcome tend to be strategy or creative work, the writing of a campaign, the structuring of when a launch plan is going to come together and how that's going to work. So hopefully these questions will help you thinking about how to structure your days just a little bit more. And if the thing you're spending the most time on is actually leading you to your desired outcome, you should feel more energized and productive at the end of the day as well. It should be satisfying and fulfilling even during frustrating pieces of the project when it's getting you closer to that desired outcome. So take a look, see what or actually start by defining your desired outcome. What is it, right? And once you have that, you will know what to work on next. I will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to have a delightful day while you are subscribing, liking, following, commenting, and telling all your friends to join us each and every Monday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time right here on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and later on YouTube.